Okay, very exciting video today. I'm with Red Foo. I'm sexy and I know it. This is his E Star. Our friends over at Solarola, Kira and Brett, custom made this incredible solar powered RV and they delivered it to you, what, like last month or something? Yeah, last month. A couple month. of months ago. Yeah. Red Foo's gonna show us around, show us what this vehicle is. I'm so excited about this and we'll go into that later, but uh, yeah, do you wanna give us a little tour? Yeah, baby, let's take a tour. This video has been sponsored by Hitachi Energy and their new animated series, The Journey of Electricity. I look forward to telling you more about this later in the video. Cool, should we go inside? Uh, okay. Have you got a name, have you named this? I just call it the Solar Roller, but then the I solar got- Solar Roller. Uh, but there's a name, uh, not yet, not yet. Just okay. a solar roller. Um, Maybe we'll get the viewers. Any yeah. suggestions, leave in the comments cool below. Cool name, cool name. Um, Do you want to jump in first? Yeah. Let's come on in. Bam. Here we got, this, is this cool. was from my old VW bus. Oh. This interior. So the reason I found out about Solarola, which is the company that like built this out and they're like experts at doing all these custom conversions. I had originally asked Brett to help me build mine. Yeah. And then I found out that he had done this van for Redfoo, which like you were saying, and then this is salvaged from that because there was an unfortunate incident where his solar powered van got crushed by a tree. Yeah, the <laughs> tree from right here. It was sitting right here, bam. This has, you know, we got a little bit of a, Turn it on, we got the water coming through the pump, you know, stuff like that. Nice. Just kind of standard van life stuff. Over here, I got the uh, fridge. I'm putting the Ninja Creamy in next. You know, the main thing is like, there's so much power and electricity here yeah. that I got a freezer over here. I don't have to worry yeah. about like, oh, it's a 12 volt system. Yeah. No, this is a 240 volt system. So oh, wow. we got 110 AC. Yeah. We got, I can put in any appliance. It can power the house. It can charge the Tesla that you came here with. We're gonna do that later. Yeah, we should test that out. It, it's got a crazy battery pack size, right? Cause I know like Tesla's like, I think Justin's, what's that? Like a 65 kilowatt hour? Uh, 70 yeah, or something? Yeah, I think it was around 70. Yeah, 70 kilowatt. This, yeah. Do you know what this is? This is, I think, three Model Y packs. So it's like 200, it's over 200, it's between two to 300 kilowatt hours. I'll put the yeah. exact amount here. I'll get yeah. all the- yeah, Brett, Brett will know. Brett yeah. will give us all of our detailed stats on it. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's amazing. The thing that's kind of really unique about this, obviously electric powered vehicles, like you look at skateboards, e-bikes, uh, scooters, it makes sense because they're lightweight. That means that they don't need tons of power to work. But a big vehicle like this, it's really rare that you get big vehicles. I know there's like delivery vans and some local city buses are starting to go electric, but they don't have a huge range. Like a lot of the cargo vans I look at electric, they only go like 80 mile range, maybe a hundred max. But this has got, what's the range on this? 180 tested, One, around 180 tested. 180 mile range, which yeah. is like, Unheard of. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. Um, haven't even got close. You could do proper, proper road tripping in that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the solar, um, I gotta do some testing, but it can get a back about, I think like 30 to 50 miles a day. Um, and Brett can can quote better on that. Yeah. Um, based on how many panels you put out, because this is uh, manual panels. So yeah. you have to kind of put them up. And then you have to kind of park and angle the best situation for the sunlight. Right, because the sun right now is over top um, and we can test putting the panels on yeah. and show a little bit of that. But then you're going to have to, you know, I'm not going to put them on the brackets, but you, we put them on the brackets and then the brackets go up and the brackets have a stand and you put that stand in like a, uh, a bucket with sand yeah. and then it's not going to blow over. Um, and then you have an awning. So for your picnic or you're at the beach, it's sun. Yeah. Then you put your, your, your chairs underneath this awning. And I think every awning should be solar. Yeah. So this is what it is. It's a sun umbrella essentially. I would, yeah, this is such an epic road tripping vehicle. This would be so cool. Yeah. And the bed goes here. It's still got the cargo doors. Yeah. Um, we got the baby, the car seat is in there. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going nowhere. And here's the freezer, which I'm excited about, but there's nothing in it now because I just don't want to waste electricity. Oh, yeah. it's a little bit of a, I got to clean that out. That is, <laughs> that is my energy drink that I put and froze it and, and then it exploded. it exploded. We'll go to a trip on the beach. We'll put all the frozen stuff, the blender. We got the blender. We can smooth these on the beach. Man. That's what I'm saying. That's an amazing blender. These are the like, ones they have in the actual like, <laughs> stores in the like, industrial one yeah, yeah. you could do a little pop-up and sell smoothies That's and have some saying. music playing dj yeah yes that would be fun stuff um i've powered 
on, on emergency situation, I've powered the house. Yeah. That's with it. this, it has a 240 out, so not a lot of vehicles have the the, the 240 coming out, yeah. 220 or 240, and we can show that because we can charge the car. Um, yeah. And then over here is the 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 the, the panel, the AEM panel, um, and you can see we're fully, basically fully charged. I didn't notice when I saw videos on this how yeah. it's like this perfect little bubble cab. Yeah. It's like really cool, and you can walk straight back. Obviously me and Raya had done a lot of van life before, but we had a van where you had to get out the front and then walk around to get in the side so you, oh. you couldn't just walk straight through. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also for those of you wondering, this vehicle, I think the company is kind of, it doesn't exist anymore, but right. E-Star, it was like an older cargo van, I think from Europe. And uh, Brett and Kira have like got a few of these and they have been, I think rebuilt it pretty much, did new motor, yeah. New wheels, new motor controller, everything. So it's like this is fully upgraded, customized. But I think originally this vehicle was designed to be electric. So I guess it's easier to work with that than try and convert like a combustion engine vehicle, right. which has got everything in the wrong places. Checking out the Solar Roller RV has got me thinking about how much electricity powers our world, from vehicles like this to our homes and everything in between. And that's why I'm excited to team up with Hitachi Energy, who are the sponsors of this week's video, to tell you about their new animated series, The Journey of Electricity. This series follows four teenagers from around the globe as they learn about how electricity works, with a little help from a fun character named Electron. It's all about exploring how renewable electricity is generated, how it flows, and most importantly, how we can use it responsibly to create a more sustainable future. So with a solar roller RV, for example, it's a perfect demonstration of how the future could look like with renewable electricity. The series even dives into things like electric public transportation, showing how it's more energy efficient to travel together than to travel individually. It also shares practical tips we can use in our everyday lives, like switching off and unplugging appliances when they're not in use. Something simple that helps reduce wasted electricity. The great thing about the journey of electricity is that it's not just about understanding the science behind how electricity works, but also about inspiring us to take action, whether it's making small changes at home, like using energy efficient appliances, or thinking about how we travel. We all play a part in this energy transition. If you want to learn more about how electricity powers your life, and discover ways you can live more sustainably, I highly recommend checking out The Journey of Electricity on Hitachi Energy's YouTube channel. It's a fun and engaging series that will give you some great ideas on how to make your everyday energy usage more sustainable. Click the link in the description to watch the series and drop a comment below on how you're already making changes to be more energy conscious. Let's work together towards a brighter electric future, right? Let's get back to the video. These clip up here, right, this is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, long road trip, if you're trying to maximize the solar, I think these all clip in. Yeah, these store in. They built some advanced work here with these frames. Okay, and then this it, all like folds out for yeah. to clip into? Yeah, so then we put all of them in. This kind of clips in, right? Oh. So basically, you put all of the panels here, and when you get them all, they're pretty tight, and then you put something right here, like a bar. What okay. I have yep. that keeps them in. This is just each individual. Like you gotta put the frame on each one oh. and you do it. And it takes about like 30 minutes because he he was like saying, okay, well I can make an automatic frame thing and da da da, but that's gonna take another three, four months. I was like, nah, I want it by the time Eileen's here. Yeah. The baby. So he said, okay, I'll make something. That's but why like do they more even manual. need why do they even need frames? Can you just use them? Because we'll we'll I'll show you. So that's a good question. So this is why. So we're gonna put these on the hooks here. What did he say? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I can't see. That end one? Yeah, you see it. Yeah, I think the frame will go on the far you. out. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so. So oh, boom. So you hang them all the way along. So now, in the morning, the sun will come up and it'll be like beaming right on it, right? And what I've done, yeah. And this, this is pretty simple. This is no like sweat to do this. Yeah, that's quick. Okay, so. What you could do is you could put something here that like clips yeah, and then you would have a stand, but you're gonna lose a couple of the panels right here. Yeah. The frame is essentially that. It's framed and then oh, it has a stand. I see, and it did it clip onto those things? And it can clip onto those things, oh. the frame. But if somehow we could 3D print something that clips onto here and then you could just get a stick. Now- That would be the, way quicker for you. But yeah, it'd be way quicker. But when the wind kicks up, Oh. These things are gonna be wobbling around, but the frame keeps them steady. That so he, he he was 
you know, there's no wind at the moment, but if it got windy, it could be very dangerous. You could damage the panels. Yeah. So he's like, let's put frames on them. And it almost treats all the panels as one thing. And they're all in there. I like, do you know what I like is that this is such kind of like early technology, figuring this kind of thing out, like powering huge amounts of solar storage that this is kind of do it yourself. Like, you know, I love that Brett's like problem solving. He's kind of inventing ways to do it. Yeah. And, 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 and look, if we had the frame set up, it'd be very, secure. It's, 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 it's secure. It just, uh, what would be the disadvantage of yeah. um, just leaving on my bed. just leaving a big frame in place. Uh, I guess you would yeah. blo it'd block the door, but maybe even the other side, and then yeah. you could just yeah. have it always with a so one side always solar that unclips and folds up. Yeah, and, and you can. It's just then traveling with it. Yeah, it can get a little dangerous, right? You're flapping, boom, boom, boom. You're gonna you're gonna lose your window. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there might be a way to have a frame already in place that yeah. clips in securely yeah. and then unfolds. I mean, there's plenty of- I love of, problem solving like yeah, that though. Like, makes, yeah, there's plenty of ways to look at it and go, okay, let's see how to make this. It's just that, um, and he could probably do it too, but you know, it, it takes some, some time yeah. to engineer it. And, and the way that they engineered this, because they drove this from Wisconsin with their family. I was following their road trip. They, yeah, yeah, all the yeah. way. How many thousand miles is that? Like 3,000 miles, two and a half? I guess, yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. And they built this system where it packs it all right here. I get it. And I think, you know, when, especially when you're trialing something that's, uh, this is still kind of a prototype van. Yeah. I, part of me really loves simplifying and making things as efficient as possible. So I would want to find like the fastest and most secure way yeah. to pop the panels up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also yeah. you got to think of expense and the time it takes right, to figure right. it all out. And Some kind of actuator would, would be the best, you know. Um, yeah. Something where, yeah, it hooks on and it just, and some kind of, my friend is inventing this thing where uh, it's just a project of his where it's just kind of like, if the sun is here, it's just going to go up a little bit, and then ee, it's going to track. And it tracks. The, it's going to oh, track. Be nice. It's and then the if the wind, if it detects wind, it's going to go down, and be safe. Yeah. So uh, I do have a friend that is building a smaller version of that, but I was telling him, I was like, hey, we got it. You know, we can. This is a great use case for that because you go to the beach. But the main thing, you go to the beach, you're going to want these as shade. So that's sorry, true. Sorry. You want you're going to want these as awnings. And, and that's what we have. It yeah. just takes a little bit of time. So do you know how much, without these extra panels, how much solar's already on the roof? Uh, yeah, it's the same amount as so uh, one, two, three. It might be four of these panels. Okay. I and think do you it's know four how much these... these panels are? Yeah, look at that. Max, uh, 140 watt? No. Per section. Per section. Oh, right. Normal max power. Yeah, I think. Oh, one, two, three, four. So it's yeah, 440 yeah. watts. So that's like 480 plus 500 and almost 600, I think. 560? Something like that. So yeah. e two panels is over a thousand watts. So it sounds like there's 2000 watts on the roof already. You said yeah. four panels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like 2000, over 2000 on the roof already. And then an additional, is it in total? So in total, is it like 5,000 watts? If you had all the panels on? Maybe, I haven't done the calculations. Okay. But Brett will know, but I Brett mean, we know. can, but uh, <laughs> I love how I'm prepared I, for the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, it's charging as we're driving. Like it's yeah. charging right, right now, awesome. even if we were driving, it's charging. That's cool. Um, That's the difference where I think there's some, like I want to try experiment with some solar power dry trips. Could your VW bus charge whilst driving as yeah. well? Oh, okay. So it's nice to have some panels permanently fitted. Yes. And then some extra that you can fold out. Yeah. And I guess eventually if you wanted to, you could even have the same the other side, right? And do oh, yeah. Do a double, do get a double five more panels as well. If you wanted even more well, juice. Well, I have more. I have them all. I mean. Oh, so you can go both sides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go both oh. sides. I have them all here. I thought it's just one side. Look okay, so you can, go, you can go both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's interesting. You have me thinking if, if we can just somehow, and you don't want to mess too much with it, but imagine you can just drive with them on the side. Yeah. And sun's gonna hit them. But you're right, like you you, you lose your windows and you lose your time. windows and you just gotta make sure it's safe and, and I make... guess what you could do if you end up not having these in the back and they're permanently on the sides like secure, yeah. then you could change this with a nice big window in the back and let a lot of natural light in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's so many possibilities, I love it. I mean, but maybe with the new solar stuff, I mean you could just, you know, I think there's some new panels where you can start just cutting and 
you, we can just make like a wrap, a yeah. solar wrap that around the sick. windows. Yeah. Right. And but then I guess you just only would capture that when the sun's at certain angles. Yeah, but you would just be effortlessly driving, the sun would be hitting, and sometimes, you know, yeah. just wrap this whole car in solar. Can you show me the control panel where you see all the like information? So here uh, we have the battery. This is the temperature. So if it gets to 100, we're in trouble. The controller gets to 170, we're in trouble. And those are, so those are those red numbers. Okay, okay. And then uh, the battery controller motor, the gearbox. And this is the battery level? Yeah, this is the battery level. And then here's the, all the batteries. So one thing, when you're custom, we can see each pack. So one, yeah. two, three, one, two, three. And then you three. can see if there's any errors like yes. some of them are like unbalanced or whatever. Right, right. And you can't do that in, in a normal car because yeah. it's all grouped. But we can take it for a spin. Let's do it. Um, can you show me this solar controller quick first? Oh yeah, so is that's that the back back? maybe maybe since those panels aren't there, we can open up the back. Yeah. Oh man, this would be so fun to go on a road trip with. Yeah. Could you open up the? Uh... Yeah. yeah. So the solar controller is here. Oh nice. Okay. Yeah, and it can show it. So it's tough because this is here, but like here. Oh, you can put a uh, camera. So what he does is he puts his phone. To, to look at it. Yeah, to look at it. And then you can just put your video on and just video it. And that's how he's... I can't really see the screen, but okay. Yeah, so that should show... And do you, can you have an app so this is uh, accessible from an app? Or I don't know if this controller can do it, but um, but there might be... you could cut a little hole in that as well, let's have a look. It might be fully charged, so it's not actually it, taking any more solar in. You said you charged it yesterday. That's true, yeah. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's probably not allowing any wattage into the batteries because they're full. One of the things Fu said that we could do is charge a Tesla from the 240 volt outlet on the side of the E-Star, this guy. So Justin's just gonna pull up now. Also, I absolutely love that there's two Teslas, two Rivians, electric cars everywhere. This is sick though. Imagine being able to like just top up people's cars. You could, this is crazy, right? On a full charge, you could fully charge three Teslas with it. That's mental. And they'll be charging up at the same time. Yeah. You could have a friend road trip with you. I think Brett was telling me this. You could have a friend road trip with you in the Tesla and they would also be able to charge off the solar the whole time. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Boom. Okay. Are we getting something? Yeah, 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 baby. Lights on. Okay, let's uh, let's plug this in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do I need to... I'll just tap it. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, then you see on the screen. And then how do you know when that's... You can go on this Tesla screen over here. It's green. Green. And it'll say charging. See. It's charging? Yep. Is there a charging screen where you yeah. can see? Five kilowatt coming in. Uh, you can go to An the hour battery. 20. Can you go Seven to the kilowatt. Charger? Go to the char oh, you're charging. Red Food's going to take me for a little drive. We were just going to go around the block or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. My first impression of this E-Star vehicle is I yeah. love this bubble, <sighs> like curved yeah. wrap around yeah. cab. Yeah. It's so yeah. fun. It's so cool. It's so like, when you're seeing scenery and stuff. Oh, yeah, I bet it was amazing for Brett driving, doing the road trip down, like yeah. the, just having the visual of like all the landscape and oh, wow, what yeah. amazing turning circle. Yeah, 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 it's unbelievable. And then... And you're not gonna hit that tree, right? Uh, I don't know how high you are. I'll, I'll just go for it a little bit. I feel like we're still in the early infant stages of battery, solar power, everything like, I feel like, People are starting to adopt it, but yeah. fast forward 20 years, 30 years, battery technology is getting better, solar is getting better. Yeah. I'm just so excited to see the future that our kids are going to grow up in, you know? Oh my God. It's going to be amazing. And so I much, so much cleaner. Well, it's so much cleaner and it's really a lot of like DIY stuff yeah. because Brett's a great example. Like if you get into it, you can build this stuff at home. Yeah. You know, he built this stuff at his home. That's more like autonomy where you're creating your own power. Yes. Having an independent solar, solar powered house. Yeah. It's definitely the future, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you can even like in a lot of countries sell that power you're producing back to the grid. Exactly. Actually make money. Exactly, exactly. Look at this shit. Look at this radius. Oh, they were behind me. Oh, this is this could yeah. be a cool. This could yeah. be a cool shot, yeah. And it can be angled like that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because it's capturing everything. Yeah, wow. Brett says that, you know, this is like a power station number one. Yeah. Then it's a mobile home number two. Mm. Um, and then it's a transportation vehicle. So it's not something that you know 
It's not just a vehicle. Yeah. It's a power station. You could charge other cars. It has, you could cook in here, you could do whatever. Then you can live in here. Wait till I get the insinuating toilet. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I, I thought this was like fully finished, like yeah. the best it's gonna be, but no. I'm excited yeah. that this is like uh, ready to, to, there's gonna be so many iterations like to get it to fully, there's so yeah. much potential, I see. Yeah, 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 because this is, you know, Brett and them, they're just masters at converting, making it, but then he was like, and then, you know, Jasmine was like, no, 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 I wanna decorate the inside. Yeah. I wanna yeah. do all this stuff. So we made it really basic. And we're gonna be putting all kind of stuff in here. A little shower spout thing. Then you, you know. can really add your own flair to it, your own creativity. Yeah, yeah. I love that. What's going on? Okay, we're calling Kira and Brett because when they drove down here from Wisconsin, there was a problem with the, the motor controller. They needed to replace it and it's not programmed quite correctly. So uh, it cutting out, it's not engaging in gear. So we're trying to call them to see if there's a way to fix it. I don't think it's a major problem, but it's, this is one of the things that I think you face when you're kind of driving prototype vehicles around. I think Redfoo's trying to uh, restart the whole van now. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm doing the process right. I guess that's the handy thing, being friends with the people that built the prototype vehicle, yeah. is that they can like help you problem solve. Yeah. This feels very similar to my van because I was didn't know what I was doing. I mean, they know a lot more than what I was doing, but I was having to problem solve and like, Cool people. I remember calling Brett when my when I broke down and I was he's like, have you tried this? And I was like checking all the cell values and oh man, that was crazy. Hey dude. Hey, hey, I'm just he's just coming back. Here we go. Hey hey, what's up? What's up? Man, hey, shaking. what's we're here with Louie and walk me through how to just shut down everything and reboot everything. Like I want to reboot the Arduino. Okay. Alright, so go up on your right by your your switch box for your forward and reverse and everything up there yeah there's a big red button yep the big red button yeah, yeah. press it yep press it down bam and okay then go to the back under the seat shut your it's like your 12 volt so your 12 volt is under your back seat on the right side there okay boom we're off and then all the breakers again oh you don't need to put the solar back on you don't need to put the solar back on no no don't worry about the solar and then high voltage back on? You can yeah, you can put the solar on later. He just said go the 12 volt on and then the high voltage. All right, here we go, here we go. I'm getting in, I've got, I've got high hopes. High hopes, high voltage, high hopes, baby. And then key is on, bam. Okay, so here we go. Boom, we're in forward. Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 we got it. We got it, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's that reset. That You just have to do the full reset. Okay, y'all want to jump in? Well, All right, nice. we're in, we're in. Up. Okay, okay. We might, the Wi-Fi might cut out, so the call might end, but uh, thanks, for t <laughs> thanks for helping. Yeah, yeah, baby, we're rolling. I so feel like when you have to overcome a problem, yeah. it's more enjoyable. It's you, more a sense of like, man. okay, we've solved a problem. Right. This is like a sailboat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, we've gone to Target, we've had the baby, we've gone places. And the fact that he drove it all the way from Wisconsin gives you some kind of idea that right. once it's dialed in, you're up. Right. It's gonna be good. Okay, Fu needs to do some other stuff now. Generously let us see the E-Star, Solarola, super inspiring. Uh, shout out to Brett and Kira. I'll link all of their stuff below. They're gonna release a whole series of the build, like all of the intricate inside stuff, how they install the batteries, all of that stuff. So go and subscribe to their channel to check that out. And uh, yeah, this is just inspiring me to want to do something bigger, like a bigger vehicle. I think a school bus would be too big, but this, this size bus or RV would be perfect. So that's definitely down the line. Uh, Next is finishing my Beetle back in the UK. Thanks again to Hitachi Energy for sponsoring this vlog and for all the incredible work they're doing to advance a sustainable energy future. Make sure to check out their animated series, The Journey of Electricity, on their YouTube channel. It's a fun and eye-opening way to learn more about how electricity powers our world and how we can use it responsibly. Don't forget to click the link in the description to watch the episodes and let me know in the comments how you're making changes to use electricity more sustainably in your own life. See you in the next video.